Welcome to the ninth episode of Wings and Wine. My name is Derek. On social media platforms, you can find me at City Needs Me. Today is a special episode of Wings and Wine because we're going back to the interview format, and we have a very special guest today. I have Taj Clinton. Say hi. Hello. Taj is a movie actress here from Pittsburgh. Um, she's also done a lot of stage plays, but I'm also gonna let her tell her story and not get right into it that way. We're still going to do the Wings and Wine review, and today we did get wings from Wiggy's, which is near the west end of Pittsburgh, um, and we also got wine, which is called Twisted. It's a Pinot Grigio, and yes, it's a white wine, so I did switch up this episode. She doesn't like red wine, but I did say I was going to get white wine this episode anyway. So let's go ahead and get this episode started. Thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it. You're the first interview we've had in quite some time. Um, I wanted to get started by just giving your background story. So if you could tell me and the people watching what your background story is. Okay, well, my backstory, born and raised from Pittsburgh. I went to Kappa for musical theater. My theater background kind of comes from middle school. I was just involved in so much. I was involved in choir instrumental um, and then these people called the thespian group came to Allegheny Traditional Academy and I was just the only child that was really just just jumped right on it like I volunteered to say all the lines I was the loudest the brightest and they're like you should consider a future here so okay. then my um, middle school teachers agreed and were like you do so much anyway, you might as well. So I had a communication teacher who helped me with my script, and then my choir teacher helped me with my music. And then I got in a kappa. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. So, with the choir, can you sing? Uh, I like to think I can, but I've never <laughs> publicly, solely performed. Okay. Why, so. Even, like, in plays or, like, any... Productions that you have done, have you had to sing at all? Not since Kappa High School. Okay. Really. Okay. So, <laughs> Buddha, but where did the name come from? Oh, okay. So, my mother, she just came up with that, I guess, Buddha, and then it got to Buddha, but, and then when I got older, I kind of got embarrassed about it, and okay. she thought it was just so funny just walking around Kmart, Buddha, but, you know, so. I just embraced it one day, and then a lot of people was like, oh, it fits you. And I'm like, I wonder why. So, yeah. Why do you think it fits you? You know why, because she thick. Thick, 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 thick. <laughs> So, with the TikTok, um, I don't do too much TikTok. I don't, like, I'll go on there and watch some videos every once in a while, but I don't post anything. But you got 48,000 followers on there. How did that come about? I was on vacation one day and I'm extremely addicted to TikToks. I send videos to people, watch them, free time. And I would just save all the videos I could see myself doing, like challenges, dances, just for fun and stuff. So again, I'm on vacation and you know, start the party and drink it and all that, and I just get real confident, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to do my TikTok. And literally the first one, I go to sleep and wake up, and I have about 14,000 followers and about 200,000 views and likes on this one challenge, and all I did was eat a lemon, or eat oh. a lime, oh, and um, I just said, you know, forget that, and made a bunch of videos. 
So you get that many followers off of eating a lot. Yeah. I can't even get a thousand followers on Instagram and I'm posting stuff all the time <laughs> on YouTube. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So do you, are you still active on there? I watch a lot of videos and then um, with family members, they like to be like, you know, let me get on your TikTok. So mm -hmm. we'll do dances and stuff like that. But I yeah. haven't successfully do another viral challenge. Yeah. I'll get back on it. I think during mm -hmm. uh, quarantine, it got real hot. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of old people in there. Uh-huh. Doing it to the whiskey. Maybe don't give me some. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, I'm not getting on there. Dancing, so. You will. No, I'm Watch. not dancing I on bet. there. Mm -hmm. No. Not doing that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> outside of um, TikTok, uh, tell me about your background with the theater. Like, is it, are you more of a theater actress or do you see yourself as more of a film actress? I see myself transitioning to film. A lot of projects in Pittsburgh involve um, filming and commercialing, but my education is in stage. Okay. So like stage combat, stage makeup, you know, a lot of stuff that, that from a distance can look real believable. Okay. But it is a completely different ball game between stage and film and I'm learning and from the feedback I've been getting from coworkers and directors, I can catch on pretty well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So you mentioned stage combat. Now, I'm stupid to the um to the terminology, you know what I mean, the jargon. So when I'm thinking stage combat, I'm thinking it's people like sword fighting on stage or something like, is that what that? What yeah, you, it um, can range anything from just a, a slap take. So let's say if a man says something and I have to slap him, there has to be like a whole, like, I don't want to say class, but before rehearsal, you take it step by step during rehearsal, you take it step by step, and then at the end, you put it all together. Okay. And then you don't actually hit or, or really do stuff until um, dress rehearsal or the show. Now, with the rehearsals, how long do you all typically do rehearsal before you actually um, put it together? have the production? Okay, so again, my background is in stage, and stage takes forever. I know we have... Um, Tech week, and tech week is like our hell week. Yeah. We'll be on stage between 12 to 48 hours just taking scene by scene because you have to do light changes, you have to do sound changes, you have to do combat changes, and you have to make sure the costume can just hold out throughout the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's be uh, pretty stressful. Draining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But probably accomplishing after it's all said and done. It's worth it. Yeah. I have fun throughout the process. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite um, play that you have done so far? All right, I have a top two that kind of I can't pick from. Um, okay. Both in college, both from Slippery Rock University. The first one is In the Forest, She Grew Fangs, okay. and it is a... twisted horror version of Red Riding Hood okay. but like also modern so instead of Red Riding Hood who I played Red Riding Hood mm -hmm. um, instead of me going through the forest to grandma's house I'm moving to a new school okay. and the big bad wolf is well you as the audience member have to pick who the big bad wolf is but mm -hmm. my conflicts are the new guy at school who wants to show he's interested in me but he's kind of coming off as rapey so I'm like <laughs> real hesitant then there's this um, girl who is real quiet she gets bullied a lot and she starts to get feelings for me but she's confused on that mm -hmm. so between being bullied and having secret gay feelings she just kind of unleashes on people oh, okay and so you have to pick is she the victim or is she the wolf that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh wait, and then my second. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my other favorite is uh, Detroit '67. I was in Slippery Rock at the time, but the production was actually held here in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. with um, New Horizons Theater Company, and I played this loud best friend named Bunny. Mm -hmm. I wore a big afro, big bright lipstick, and I was just a comedic relief. 
Okay. And I love being that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So you prefer comedy over dramatic roles? Honestly, it depends how lengthy it is. Me being the comedic relief, I am always there. But the Red Riding, Ho Red Riding Hood role was actually my very first real emotional one. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. What's your inspiration? Um, like when you're going into a role, do you have certain inspiration? Uh, like do you look towards something that inspires you to do a role? Or somebody that inspires you whenever you're going into your acting mode? My inspiration comes more from the people I know than who I aspire to be. Okay. So I think of everyone who's in my corner that I know is coming to my show, or if they can't make my show, they're calling me before and after, if not texting me during, like, break a leg, mm -hmm. I heard you're doing good, keep it up, you know. Um, also my mentors, people who send me information on shows, just anyone who's just very, very just on my acting stuff with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do cool. it for them. That's good. Mm -hmm. I prefer people to be inspired by people they know instead of people they don't. Because mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with acting right now, um, with everything going on with COVID, how has that affected like the theater and film and anything that you've been doing since then? Just like the rest of the world, it's been very virtual. Like a lot of auditions are over Zoom. And it's just very annoying. I'm the type of person I, I just I just feed off of space and energy. Like I, I just love that nervous feeling of uh, competition and who's in there. You don't know who could be watching. You could be, you know, uh, someone else from a different play also casting you. Like I just feed off of all that. And it being virtual and at home, it's kind of like a well. Here we go. Here go yeah. another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has to be hard, especially in that field. Yeah, and then I had a um, group, I had a couple group readings, and group readings are the worst because, you know, in theater, ages can range from younger to old, and you know, the older people be in the Zoom meetings, it's just yeah. like, who, who's there, who, you know, yeah. doing all this, and it's like, oh my gosh, just read the screen. Yeah, mm -hmm. trust me, I know. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you know. <laughs> I get annoyed by it. No disrespect to any of the old people to be in those Zoom meetings. But I do get frustrated with that. But um, it's good that you still have confidence during this period in time because everything's gonna come back, you know, and everything will start to bounce back. Now, even though things have been affected the way they have, as far as with COVID in the film industry, and I know a lot of things like you can't get too close to people and stuff like that. So um, you have filmed. A movie recently right mm -hmm. and it's called adulthood yeah can you tell me about that what I can say it's about a group of friends from college entering the real world literally all about adulthood the transition from when you can really depend on your friends and all you had to do was class and homework and extracurricular activities to relying on just yourself and your multiple incomes or no incomes or if you want to continue your dream uh, as I am in real life my character she is an actress okay. so she graduates with a bachelor in acting and then she goes into the real world and she lands a certain job and it's not acting and she's just finding this hard balance between um, you know working towards your dream and working a nine-to-five and it just clashes mm. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. So, are you all done filming that, or? No, we still have. Literally, I think just the ending scene left. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do they um, know when it's gonna be released, or? Okay. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's still in production mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds cool. Um, so we have wings and we have wine. Um, so I don't want everything to get cold or the wine to get warm, but. Let me ask, what type of wings do you typically like whenever you get wings? Okay, I'm an all-flats chick. You need to be all-flats. 
need to be fried hard. Don't give me no wet chicken. And I'm a saucy, saucy girl. I like sauce better than dry rub. Yeah. I decided to try one because, you know, this is all new to me. But yeah. I need some sauce. With blue cheese, okay? No ranch here. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to edit that part. Out, <laughs> but, you know. Um... So today we did get wings from Wiggy's. Um, she got, what did you get? Buffalo hot and then just wing dust. Okay. And I got, it's called Wiggy's Hey Ma. Um, so it's probably going to be spicy, which I probably shouldn't have done because I'm not a spicy person. So if I start crying on here, it's not because she's a great actress. It's because I just um, can't do the spicy stuff too much. So we're going to go ahead and taste the wings. Um, I'm gonna do that now. Mm. Fire. Mm -hmm. So Noblestown Road is towards the west end. Um, somebody recommended this to me years ago and I just never went. So I figured I'd try it out. I really like these wings though. I give them a four out yeah. of five. Mm -hmm. I typically do out of ten. So I'll um, go ahead and give them an eight out of ten on here. Agreed, I agree. <laughs> but, you know, it's around the same percentage. <laughs> they get Twisted, which is a Pinot Grigio. It's a big bottle, but it's very affordable. Um, you could probably find it at any of your local wine stores. I'll go ahead and pour up. Shout out to my mom because she actually made some custom glasses for me. And she made this tip jar that's sitting on the bar counter today with my new logo. My new logo was actually made by Brian Tolbert Design. He's out of D.C. right now, but he's from Pittsburgh originally. So, happy to have the new logo and some new glasses and some new products. There will be merchandise on the way, but um, with the wine, do you drink wine a lot or are you a wine drinker? I drink wine if there's like, <laughs> it's gonna sound so bad if there's nothing else around or if that's just, you know, what my friends want, but I need some Patron, okay, some tequila, uh -huh. that's all me. Yeah, oh, if you drink wine, you're a white wine drinker, right? Yeah, or or like a sweet red, I don't like that bitter oh, okay. stuff, nothing bitter. Oh, uh, you don't like the dry, bad like. Uh-uh. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and taste this one, I'll see how it tastes. Yeah. Take a shot. It's okay. It's what you would think of when you think of white wine, like this specific taste. In yeah. My opinion. It's um a little sweet, but not too sweet. Um, the flavor's alright. Oh, it's not. It's not my thing, I guess, but it, it's okay. It's okay for an affordable wine. Um, like I said, it's a real big bottle, so I couldn't get through that whole thing. I know that, but um, it's good if you have like a game night, maybe, or if you have like people around, like maybe even a little dinner party, like on a Sunday or something like that. I would go ahead and um, suggest something like this. That way you have a big bottle to share with a bunch of people and you don't have to worry about um, running out of wine. But I'll give it a, I'll give it a six out of 10. It's affordable, but the flavor is just not a lot of flavor in it for, for me. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not too dry, but it's, it's just, I don't see the flavor there. But it's a Twisted Pinot Grigio, it's out of California. Um, Go ahead and try it out. If I'm wrong and you like it a lot, go ahead and put it in the comments. Tell me what you think or what you would prefer or recommend going forward with that. Um, do the same about the wings as well. What would you rate this? I agree. Same yeah. thing. Also, was going back to the social media stuff, um, 
looking at your social media a lot, you repost or post a lot of, uh, I'm not going to say political, but um, things going on that are affecting the country and affecting black people typically. Um, you seem to be very vocal about that or very supportive of uh, everything that's going on, like protests and everything of that nature. Can you explain more like how how is everything's making you feel this year with everything that's been going on in the country? Oh, heavy. I feel like I feel like the rest of the world or the rest of my people were just very tired and we just, I don't know, year by year we, we make our voices heard but it's never enough. So I feel like when I repost stuff or I share stuff, I'm not only spreading awareness, I'm showing where I stand. Like I, I stand yeah. with my people. We're here, we're tired, we want to be treated equal. You get to a point where you're not feeling accepted. And I know so a lot of times it's not that we want to be accepted into everything, but we want to be treated like humans. And a lot of times we're not being treated like humans. Uh, you even have animals that are treated far better than what we are. You see people getting killed in the streets and then just nothing is being done about it. Like we're visually seeing everything happening and that's a problem. Like we're seeing things happening and nothing's being done about it. That's a huge issue to me. Um, but I see a lot of the things that you post that I, I respect that and I think that um, is very important to um, a lot of people. It gives people um, information that they may not see mm -hmm. otherwise because there's so much uh, crap that we see on social media all day see a bunch of jokes, we see a bunch of unnecessary things that aren't really helping us. So when you post that, I, I appreciate that. I think that's very important to to people um, of our culture. I also feel like a lot of people run to social media to hide from that type of stuff, but I feel like if I'm trying to create a public figure platform, you're going to find that here. You're not just going to find um, movies or theater, you're not just going to find laughs here, but you're going to find my support yeah. for my beliefs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Um, now, let me get back to the acne. And I want to know, what's your favorite film genre? Okay. Horror. I'm yeah. a big horror fan. You know, it being October, I've, I've been super happy. I... To get more specific, my favorite horror genre would be like the horror comedies. Okay. I, my first one was The Bride of Chucky, and I fell in love with that because Chucky is, you know, funny yet gruesome. Mm. Then we have Idle Hands, and it's oh, wow. about this. Do you know about Idle yeah, Hands? Yeah, I'm Well, I'll tell some people who don't. Idle Hands is about this guy who literally wakes up with what happened? Hands from the devil, or he gets cursed, or something yeah, his, like his that. One hand is cursed, yeah, his yeah. one hand is, is cursed from the devil, and it pops off and causes mayhem. And then you got his two best friends, who actually gets killed by the hand, but they come back t from the dead to help him find it and stop it. And then it has Jessica Alba yeah, in it. Yeah, it was first time I saw Jessica Alba. It has um, Seth Green in yeah. it. That's the only person I think I know. Who else? Devin Saw was okay. the main character. Uh huh. He was yeah. big in the 90s, I remember that. What else is funny from the 90s? Little Shop of Horror, well, I don't know if Little Shop of Horror is from the 90s. I think like but late 80s. Yeah. Little Shop of Horror, it's musical, horror, and funny. You know, it, me, so. Have you ever seen the stage production of that? Because that's where that ori originated. No, and I would yeah. love to. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's on the bucket list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, with the horror comedy, uh, do you have, or even, it doesn't have to be horror, but it could be anything. Do you have a favorite film? Like, what's your favorite movie? I just love theater and film so much, I can't just pick one. If you put on How High, I know yeah. the script. Like, you can turn it on and I'll say everything from word to word. Mm -hmm. You put on, um, else? You put on Cloverfield. Like, that was my, the first movie that mm -hmm. I seen 
the uh, point of view, and I loved yeah. it. Qu- Quarantine and Cloverfield, that little series mm-hmm. right there. Actually, that era of movie, so like Paranormal Activity, and then those three, like that was that sort of shifted my view on what I wanted to do in movies, because mm-hmm. I wanted to do black movies, drama, funny, you know, Jamie Foxx, work with all of them, but yeah. then... I'm like, I do love horror, but I feel like as a black woman, I would get killed first, so I'm not trying to do that. But if it's as cool as these movies, you know, like the special effects, Mm -hmm. oh, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind at all. So have you ever thought about producing or uh, directing or doing anything outside of just acting? Yeah, in college I had a directing class, and um, we paired up with, we had this thing called Brave New Plays, and um, oh, okay. everything was written, directed, and acted by students. Yeah. So there was a directing class. We took the plays that was freshly written, and then we would work with the writer to cast it, mm-hmm. and then we would direct it. We would have some input by them, but they, they really wouldn't have anything to do with the re- directing. Okay. But I tried my best to please not only my audience, but my cast and my writer. And I directed, it was a play about these two old men, they were in a nursing home, and they were just up to no good. Like the the jokesters, the pranksters and all that. But they were also kind of senile, so in the middle of a prank, they would just think it was normal or something like that. Like, Mm -hmm. one would take out his teeth and, and, and try to do something funny with it and, yeah. and be like, oh, there's my teeth. Like, you know, just, some, just something really funny. And it was really light. And I just wanted to make sure everyone had fun. That was so tell me about, you had like an independent film that you did last year that you won an award for? Yes, it's called I Love You to Death by Long Knuckle. I don't know if it's Long Knuckle Studio Productions or Long Knuckle Productions. It was about um, the two serial killers and their passion was killing people, but they also found romance in them. Okay. So as they killed more people, it was just like a their thing. Okay. Know? And I was the news reporter. <laughs> All right. So I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for that. You also had won another award when you were in college, right? Yes. So it was the Kennedy Center Theater College Festival. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Center Theater College Festival for Irene Ryan of 2018. So what happens is um, this administration, I'm Region 2. So I am the Irene Award winner of Region 2. And Region 2 is Southern New York all the way to either North Carolina or South Carolina. Oh, wow. But every college in between then um, will meet up in one spot and compete. So the administration will go to all these colleges and, and watch their plays. Okay. It's either in the spring or the fall, I do believe, okay. you know, by semester. So um, they go to these plays and then they put the plays up for an Irene Ryan. Irene Ryan is a, is a woman who was in acting, mm-hmm. and forgive me, I don't know what she did historically, but it was something to get, you know, an award yeah. named after her. Right. So they would watch your play, these plays, and if your play got put up for an Irene Ryan, they would look deeper into the acting. So mm-hmm. then the actors would get an Irene Ryan. They would always pick about a man and a, it's either a boy or a girl or um, let's say if it's just all men they, they would pick the two best ones yeah and so anyone in the play can get an iron iron you could be a supporting role you could have one line but as long as you were you know on your game mm-hmm. you could get an iron ryan one was just your monologue and scene one okay round two was both your scenes and round three is everything put together and it was like a package deal, so they didn't play about timing. You had five minutes for round one, seven minutes for round two, and nine minutes for round three. And then another thing that was um, important was transitions. Okay. So let's say if I did a monologue about a woman in love, but my scene is about um, two couples arguing, yeah. how am I going to show that transition from one character to another? Mm. And then... um. 
yeah, you just, they just pick per round who would go to the next round until they got to one pair. Okay, yeah. okay, that's cool. Congratulations on that. Yeah, and yeah. I am the first person, the only person, woman, black woman, to win the award in the name of Slippery Rock University. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to my partner, Tyler Hahn. Thank you so much. He was in the play with me in the forest. She grew fangs. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So hopefully more awards are coming on the way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so now you mentioned the independent film. You're uh, talking about the newscaster. Mm -hmm. You kind of giving me like Hillary Banks vibes today with your outfit. Yeah. So <laughs> with Halloween coming up, do you typically dress up for Halloween? Yes. Yeah, so my favorite thing to do is um, I'll either do multiple little costumes like i'm not the type of girl to just throw on cat ears and call it a day yeah if i'm gonna be a cat i'm gonna be something silly like roadkill so i'm gonna put on cat ears and then draw a big tire mark across mm -hmm. my face just because i have the skills that um slippery rock taught me so i had stage combat i also had stage makeup yeah stage makeup ranged from beauty makeup to old age makeup to blood gore bruising mm -hmm. all that that's so, cool yeah or i'll do like one real big one like i'll just invest so much money in like last year i was the bride of chucky i was tiffany so i had green contacts i had the black lipstick i had the uh, i heart chucky on the boob i had the wedding dress I had the fishnets, the leather jacket, the bloody... I had it all. Yeah. Yep. This year, it's a surprise. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do Halloween, too. Halloween's my second favorite holiday behind Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, I don't dress up every year, but when I do dress up, I put together my costume right. as opposed to uh, just buying one, typically. Um, one year, I was Ice Cube from <laughs> the NWA um, era. And last year I was other guy from Blank Man, who, okay. you know, David Allen Greer's character. So I put that together. I like people to guess what I am, as mm -hmm. opposed to me just, you know, I'm not Superman and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, but um, I do that. So that's pretty big for me. Um, now with going forward in your career, like what are some things, like what are some goals that you have for your career? Okay, I'll probably I'm gonna split them up between. Short term and long term. Okay. So my short term goal mm, would probably just get more involved in my own like personal theater stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe starting my own YouTube channel. Um, I have just like a bunch of ideas, but my flaw is that I'm a perfectionist. So if I can't execute it exactly how it is in my brain. Yeah. Or if I can't find the consistency to really um, just devote myself to this, then mm. that's where it gets, you know, messy. But yeah. I feel like, let's see, if I feel like if I can network more, because, you know, everything's about networking. Yeah. So my issue is that I don't have a location or a budget or exactly the tools to execute a, a, the type of show that I want to but I have a reliable cast right. maybe I can link up with someone who has the equipment who has a location they just don't have a cast right okay. so maybe we could work together to yeah. you know make something happen and then long term not to compare myself to someone, but just to, to get the good general idea. I want to be like Adam Sandler and Eddie Murphy. I want to have my own shows produced, written, and starred in. And then I want to be able to, to give my people, or just people of color, anyone who, who's having a hard time, disabilities, anyone who has a hard time with theater, I want to be able to, to give them a chance. That's good. So, you know, role... Even if it's a job, you know, like it could it could even be a designer, a person who makes beats, yeah, just anyone. Just come work with me, come help me, and build the Taj Army or something. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's always good to give back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's oh, uh, it's very important to collab. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, um, 
something I had to learn is you can't play every position on the team. Right. Because once you start doing that, things get It takes a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, so sometimes you have to give up some things to gain some things back. And you have to be able to give up some things to learn some things from other people that you may not know. Yeah. And you pick up things on the way in ways you can help other people and people can help help you out. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it could be a teamwork situation where everybody succeeds. Right. So that is very important. And let me ask you this. Um, living in Pittsburgh, how do you think that has affected your acting career, whether it's a positive or negative or both? It's a little bit of both. I have I have a good support system. As I mentioned, I have people who are constantly asking me what's going on with that, if I need help with it. Uh, matter of fact, the first person who came to mind, shout out to Kevin Brown, he is always the first person to keep me in mind. Let's say if someone's like, I'm working on a project, but I need a, a young black girl. Oh, my baby Taj, are well, you working on some shit? Working on nothing here. here. Throw her right in. I, he, matter of fact, my very first professional play, I didn't audition for, which oh, was wow. Detroit 67. Oh. I did not audition for that. Oh, wow. The director was like, I need someone who is, um, who's serious, yeah. who is loose, likes to have fun, but also can be funny, like, yeah. you know, knows how to improv. And he was like, oh, I got a young black woman in mind. Mm -hmm. Granted, I never, I never acted for Kevin Brown before, but he seen something in me, and he was like, yeah, you need to be on stage. And so... He connected us, and now I, I'm very good friends with that director. And when yeah. he's in town, he's like, "Hey, come audition for my play." Oh wow! So okay. yeah, but you know, Pittsburgh doesn't have a lot of opportunities as Atlanta or LA and New York, you know, all that stuff. So I feel like Pittsburgh is preparing me for those type of places, but yeah. it's just not it. Yeah. yeah, especially you know, black theater. Right. Mm -hmm. And who's to say that, you know, down the line that somebody might, like you might, bring that here. Right. You know? uh -huh. Like uh, Tyler Perry brought that to Atlanta, you know what right. I mean? Stuff mm -hmm. like that. But a lot of times you have to leave your home, go somewhere else, learn a to lot of things to bring that, yeah. that stuff back home. Mm -hmm. You know, so Pittsburgh is one of the hardest cities to make it in entertainment period um and in a lot of fields i mean honestly um you know so if you're able to do that leave come back you know you never know what what you may be able to give back to other people so that's all good you yeah. know i'm i'm happy to hear that from you and i'm i'm excited to see what's to come for you and to see what happens for you going forward you know um, I appreciate you coming on today, though. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so, again, we had Taj Clinton, movie, film, stage actress producer, today. Producer, director, writer. Yeah, producer, director, writer, <laughs> award winner. Okay. And, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I appreciate her having or her coming on today. Um, you can find me on social media platforms at City Needs Me. I'm going to let Taj tell you her social media platforms if she can remember them this okay. time. Okay. I do believe Instagram is at BooterButt1. That's B-O-O-D-E-R-B-U-T-T-1. But I know for a fact, TikTok is just BooterButt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you. This has been Wings & Wine, Episode 9. My name is Derek. Also, follow the Wings & Wine Instagram page, at WingsXWine. Um, you can also, if you want to see more designs by the person who designed my logo, that is Brian Tolbert Design. Um, shout out to my mom again for making these wine glasses and my tip jar. Um, catch you on the next episode. You have a good night.